Hi, this is a continuation for Power Electronics Lectures, and in the previous lectures, we have covered how we calculate and uh, derive the equations for calculating the switching losses. And today we are going just to get some examples of how we use these equations in some practical uh, cases. So again, we have here a resistive load. That load is driven by uh, a switch, okay? And the question says, and IGBT, which is IGBT, switches a 10 ohm resistive load. So this resistive uh, resistor is a 10 ohm one across a 100 volt DC supply. So the VS here is a 100 volt at a frequency of uh, 10 kilohertz. So this is the gate frequency. If the switch on state duty cycle is a 25 percent, that means the delta is 0.25 so that the duty cycle for that pulse coming uh, coming to this gate is 25 percent okay so the first thing calculate the average load and uh, voltage and current okay so that resistor here will receive some average voltage and average current will go through that one okay so it's not the maximum it's the average one so how we calculate the average voltage and current i think we have uh, seen this one before and if you drawn the voltage and current through uh, going through or across this resistor you will come up with um, a square wave and that square wave the equation for that according to the RMS and the average value uh, lectures we can really get the V load or V across this resistor as the uh, uh, duty cycle times the voltage of the supply okay so the voltage of the supply times the uh, uh, duty cycle we will get the average voltage seen by this load it's not the average voltage across the uh, the transistor no it's across the load so vl average equal the 25 percent okay times the maximum voltage which is 25 volts so if i apply 25 uh, percent duty cycle here the load will see 25 percent of my maximum voltage which is 25 volt now this is the average voltage what about the average current if we got the average voltage we divide we divide that by the resistor load okay resistance value and you will get the average current and that's what's happening so the average voltage uh, divided by the resistor value and i think we will get 2.5 ampere Remember, this one is the average values for the load, okay? It doesn't work with the switch. So, what's the second part? Calculate the switch losses now. Switch losses, not switching losses. The switch losses is both the switching losses and conduction losses, okay? So, if the switch on time is T on one microsecond, why we need this? Because the equation of the switching losses needs T on. And the switch off time is T off 2 microsecond. And the on state voltage is 2 volt. So the voltage across that transistor, once it turns on, it will be 2 voltage. Okay? It's not 0.2 or 0.5. It's 2 voltage. So I think this is what is here. Okay? So voltage across this period is 2 volt. Okay. So what is the switch losses? When we think about switch losses, that means that conduction losses and also the switching losses i think the switching losses we have equation for that but we have two equations one for inductive load and one for resistive load because we have resistive load we have to recall the resistive load equation which is v maximum times i maximum times t on plus t off times frequency over six the inductive load is over two so what is the v maximum reaching my transistor here okay so the v maximum is this one which is during the off time during the off time here the vs will be present here so the v maximum is a hundred volt what is the i maximum i maximum is the current going through my transistor if it's totally on and how we get this one i think we can get this one by uh, by saying the hundred volt now divided by the resistor it will give me the, the the current that will go maximum through my transistor i can also say i will decrease also i will subtract the two voltage which is across this one so it's 100 volt 
minus 2 volt divided by the resistor, I will get this current, okay? But I will just, for, for simpli simplicity, I will just ignore this. Practically, you can ignore it or just take it into account uh, if, it, if it really uh, makes some significant differences. But for this question and simplicity, I will ignore the two voltage here. So it will be 100 volt divided by the uh, 10 ohm. It will give me the maximum current going through the transistor. Okay? And that maximum current will be Vs divided by R. It will be 10 ampere. So now the maximum current now at this period, it will be 10 ampere. Okay? Practically, it might be less because of the voltage drop here. And turn on and turn off, I think, from the question. And the frequency is also from the question. And 6 is already there. So the power average switching for on and off together, okay, it will be 5 watt. Now, this is the switching losses. What about the conduction losses? The conduction losses is calculated by the, uh, the, the, on, the, the on voltage, okay, times the current but the conduction is not continuous the current off it has some off duration and then on duration off duration and on duration okay and the voltage has the same on duration and off duration how we calculate the conduction i think i mentioned that before if we have a fixed voltage which is two voltage here two volt during the on time I can really just multiply it by the average current, okay? Not the maximum. I can multiply it by the maximum if it's all the time on, but no, it turns on and off, on and off, okay? So the equation for the conduction, uh, uh, conduction uh, dissipation, okay, our losses, is the on voltage, okay, times the average current, okay? Or if you have constant current, you can say the constant current times the average voltage. So one is con constant and the second one is average. You have another way to calculate that by taking the, con the, the integration for this waveform and for that waveform, uh, and you can recall the wave from the uh, average uh, lecture, average calculation lecture. So now the conduction is the V on times the average switching, which is the V on is two, and the average current is the same as the average load current because it's going from the load to the, to the resistor, okay? So it will be 2.5, okay? You can consider it as delta I max. Delta I max, it will be the same value as 2.5 and it will be 5 watt again. So now the total switch losses, it will be 5 watt for the switching losses and 5 watt for the conduction losses and it will be 10 watt. So that transistor here, it will be dissipating 10 watt all the time. And I think dissipating that much of power will rise the uh, junction temperature. And we have a problem here. If the temperature is rising above the 150, I think this will damage the transistor. So that's why we have to calculate now what is the uh, required heatsink thermal resistance if the design maximum allowed case temperature is 85. So if you are a designer and you selected uh, for your case to not exceed 85 degree, okay? So what is the, uh, and the ambient is 25. So what is the uh, thermal resistance for your heat sink to buy and to assemble it or to attach it to your transistor? So the case now is 85 and your ambient is 25. What is the thermal resistance for this heat sink? I think we can remember the ohm uh, ohm's law for thermal uh, circuits, which is thermal ohm's law, and that says the thermal resistance equals the difference between the temperature, which is between the case, in this case, and my ambient, 85 minus 25, divided by the power dissipation by this transistor. And I think that uh, uh, the difference here is the case minus the ambient divided by the power uh, uh, dissipation and I think we have all the data for that the power dissipation is 10 watt and the ambient is 25 and the case is selected to be 85 and that will give us a thermal resistance of 6 degree per watt so if I want to choose uh, a, a, a heat sink I have to select it less than 6 degree per watt 
So I advise you to uh, stop the video and try this uh, question by yourself again and then return back and check your answer because trying by yourself give you confidence. Okay, so now let's go to the second question and once I show the second question, I ask you also to stop the video and try this question by yourself first and then you see the answer. Okay, so in this case we have an inductive load, okay? And always the inductive load keeps the same current going through that branch here. Okay, this is ideally. So the power and channel MOSFET, we have a MOSFET, switches a 10 ampere load. This is the load that will conduct 10 ampere always across the 100 voltage uh, supply. Highly inductive load. When we say high, uh, high inductive load, that means this will try to make the, the, the 10 ampere continuous. And the frequency is 10 kHz again. If the switch on time is T on 1 microsecond and off time 2 microsecond, and now because we have a MOSFET, this one is IGBT in this, in this graph, but consider it as MOSFET. We have a MOSFET, the on state resistance, so we don't have the voltage drop across the MOSFET. We have the RDS on, okay? The on state resistance between the drain and source is 0.2 ohm. At 10 ampere okay when when it passes 10 ampere so what's the first uh, requirement is to calculate what is the worst case switch losses okay so okay again switch losses means the switching losses and the conduction losses but what we mean by worst case switching losses do we have the duty cycle it gives us the the, the uh, uh, the frequency but not the duty cycle so i think this is a key to know the duty cycle okay so calculate the worst case switch losses i think we turn off and on off and on the switch by the duty cycle but the worst case is when we drive our mosfet with duty cycle uh, approaching one or very close to one why because when the duty cycle is one, the current will go continuously through my MOSFET. And this will make it dissipate more heat and dissipate more power. And this might be considered as the worst case scenario. Okay. So the, from this word here, we can think that the worst case is when our transistor start conducting continuously uh, that current, which is 10 ampere and doesn't have a rest time, which is the off time, okay? We can consider this. So, so now let's consider the worst case scenario happens when the delta approaches to one. And again, the switching losses, we can recall this equation, which is V max I max T on plus T off times the frequency divided by two, not six, because we have inductive load. And I think V max is known as 100. I max, I think the I max, which is the 10 ampere here coming from that inductive load will pass also through my transistor. So I max is, is 10. T on and T off given in the question, frequency 10 kilo, and that will give us 15 watt power dissipation. That's the switching losses. What about the uh, conduction losses? As we mentioned, the uh, delta is one, the duty cycle is one, that means it's continuously passing the maximum current, okay? And that current is passing through the MOSFET, which is 10 ampere continuously, okay? But that one is passing through that transistor, and that transistor now has some on resistance, on state resistance, which is 0.2. And that resistor will take that current and will start dissipating heat. So how much power dissipated by a resistor. I think we calculated that before and we mentioned that before. And the resistive load dissipates power equals to I square RMS. I RMS square times R. So now the conduction uh, losses will, it will be I RMS, RMS square times RDS on. And I think we got RDS on, but what is I RMS? I think from also the RMS um, uh, calculation lecture, we know the RMS value can be calculated by the maximum current times 
the square root of delta and because we have delta 1 so the square root will be 1 and it will be 10 ampere so back to this equation 10 ampere square times 0.2 it will be 20 watt so now the uh, switching losses now will be 15 watt from the switching and uh, the total losses and also the conduction it will be 20 okay and that will come up with 35 watt okay and this will increase the temperature and you have to consider also the heat sink design but i have another question here calculate the maximum instantaneous power dissipation what i mean by instantaneous power dissipation i mean this one what is the maximum the maximum is happens at this peak i think okay and that peak happens when the maximum voltage and also the current at the same time occurred okay so i think we mentioned that before that uh, the peak value for the instantaneous power in the inductive case is v maximum i maximum okay and if we calculated the v maximum which is 100 volt i maximum which is 10 ampere that will give us 1000 watt 1 kilowatt which is a big value okay that will uh, that might spike my junction temperature and kill my mosfet uh, if it's not considered well okay so that's that's it for this question and i hope you try it for yourself again and see what things that you uh, did understand so you can rewatch the video again and that brings me to the end of this lecture thank you very much and see you in the coming videos